Hello learners, in this lecture we will see what is split tensile strength and along with that we will also try to understand how it is going to function in the lab and also we will try to understand all the practical aspects of this. So this video will be a bit longer but try to stay till the end so that you get a complete picture of this and you will not have any doubts left in your mind once you finish this entire lecture. So to begin with we will try to see what is split tensile strength. So coming to the aim of this app experiment to find the vertical compressive stress and the shearing stress by split tensile test for a given concrete. So what all things we require? We require a compressive testing machine. You can see it. We have two machines here, isn't it? The one which is on the right side, we call this as universal testing machine, which is called as UTM. And this is my compressive testing machine. So what is the difference between them? So you, the compressive testing machine, what I have, I can put only the compressive load here. But when I speak of universal testing machine, I can put the compressive force along with that I can put the tensile forces and other load if I, if I need to put I can put it here. So it depends which one you want. Usually it all depends what is there in the lab that you are practicing right. So as of now we require only compressive testing machine we can either use this or we can use the universal testing but we need to apply the compressive force. Coming to the theory we will come to this theory a bit later we will try to see more about the cylinder how it has to be performed. So these are called a cylinder what I require to conduct my split tensile strength. So this is the mold what we have. We need to understand one thing the height of this mold is usually 300 mm and the inner to inner diameter is 150 mm right yeah. So when we try to apply the force here we need to keep our cylinder we need to keep the cylinder in this way you can see it is placed horizontal but previously if you remember uh, when we were doing the compressive testing on the cube we were using the cylinder also and I also made it very clear in India we don't use this cylinder for compressive testing if you want to use it it's the same cylinder what we use but you have to keep it vertically if you keep the cylinder vertically then we are doing a compressive test on that which we don't do in India but uh, if you want to do the split tensile strength test then the same cylinder is put in this way that is horizontally we are going to place it here right. So this is how it looks it is a compressive force what we apply from here as well as from here you can see it here as well right. So coming to the next thing yeah so right so I hope this entire understanding is clear. We need to understand one thing I am telling that split tensile strength test right this is how that uh, entire machine is going to work just understand uh, this is a cylinder what I have I'm, I'm showing you the front view of that and from here I'm applying a force right this is P force and from here it is a P force. So you need to ask me one question that I told that we are doing a split tensile test but what kind of what sort of load we are applying here we are applying a compressive load isn't it I'm applying a load from here which is P in nature let us say and also I'm applying a load from here as well we have seen that from the machine compressive testing machine the name of the experiment is split tensile that means I need to apply a tensile that means I need to pull this right only then the tension will be coming but here what I'm doing I'm putting a compressive load so what is the mistake in this right so the mistake is that we are not doing any mistake here we need to understand one concept here the concept is about the Poisson's ratio so what the Poisson's ratio says that just take a uh, elastic rubber band if you have you try to apply the force in the x direction let me do it here so let us say this is the elastic band what I have I'm trying to apply the force in the I'm pulling a tensile force let us say in the x direction right so this is x for me let me do it here this is x for me and this is y so you can see the change in the y direction right so since I'm pulling it in this direction this size what I have now it is decreasing isn't it so this is called as Poisson's effect. So what it's going to happen if you're putting a longitudinal strain then there is a lateral strain happening. So same thing the same mechanism is happening here as well. So let us consider uh, this as my cylinder uh, forget about the shape it's not rectangle let us for time being we'll consider this to be a rect uh, cylindrical in nature. I'm applying a compressive force from here from both the side. So because of this compressive force and what is happening there is a Poisson's effect happening since the load is acting in the y direction my specimen will try to move in the x direction due to the Poisson's effect right and each material has its own Poisson's uh, ratio and if you can see it here for cast iron it is 0 0.21 to 0 0.26 but we are concerned with the concrete so concrete has 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 
poisons ratio right we understood up to here now what is going to happen with with this so when i try to apply a load no when i try to apply a compressive load here what is going to happen after some time since only this much area what you have no it is in contact right only this much area is in contact and only this much area is in contact so initially we'll be having a bit compressive force here but due to this poisons ratio since the load is being applied in the y direction let us consider this is y for me and let us consider this has to be x so in x direction what is going to happen since the load in the y direction is compressive and with this uh, knowledge of poisons ratio it has to be a tensile load in the x direction right agree with me this is my x direction that means it has to generate a tensile load so let me put this tensile load so here as a result of that what is going to happen here the tensile load is generated isn't it very simple so this tensile load is generated now what has happened the tensile zone the tensile uh, load is generated as a result of that what will happen to split this uh, as a result of that a crack is going to form here right so this crack what is going to form this will give me the tensile strength of my concrete to split this how much stress is generated that stress is called a split tensile stress which we denote it as sigma t and that sigma t value is given and we'll try to see that i hope this much is clear because of this the crack is going to form so that is why you can see it here right see it's the same mechanism which works here we have this here and we have one uh, bottom kept here as a result of that what is going to happen we'll do the same thing on the specimen as well so as a result of that what will happen the tensile stresses are develop in the x direction in this way and due to this tensile stresses my concrete is not strong in taking the tensile once the tensile capacity of a concrete is uh, overshooted what is going to happen the cracks are going to form so this crack will tell me that the specimen has failed and to calculate how much tensile load has come on this for that we have a formula we'll try to see that formula what it is so all this is hap happening just because of this poisons ratio right yeah now uh, we'll go a step ahead so let me show you that uh, formula what is written you can see it here no the horizontal stress right this is a split tensile stress what i need it is given as 2p upon pi ld let me zoom in a bit yeah so forget about the vertical the horizontal stress is 2p upon pi ld if you calculate this you are going to get how much tensile stress has been generated in your cylinder so where p stands for the compressive load at the failure what we have applied d is a diameter of the cylinder which is 150 mm and uh, r is a diameter by 6 and l is a length of a specimen which is 300 mm right so i hope uh, this things are clear now we'll try to go one step ahead after this we'll try to see few other things now coming to the procedure the procedure remains very straight forward the given concrete sample which is cylindrical in shape is placed between the two jaws of the compressive testing machine with the loading and plates and splitting rod is such a way that loading takes place along the periphery of the cylinder you can see it here no the two uh, pieces have been kept here so along the periphery the load is going to happen the compressive load is applied gradually till the specimen fails and the dial gauge reading is noted we have a dial gauge kept here that will show me the reading at the failure the vertical compressive stress as well as the vertical as, well, as well as the horizontal shear stresses are worked out the test is repeated for the different sample let us say this is one sample i have similarly we have to take three uh, samples usually when we do the test right if we have different samples for different water cement ratio you can try to do it and the same whatever i explained it here in the previous slide you can see the same here it's a utm loading load coming from here this is a test sample a tension crack is created here right yeah then coming to the final part of this uh, calculation the length of the specimen is 30 cm which comes out to be 300 mm dia of the specimen is 15 cm which comes out to be 150 mm load at the failure is has come out to be 23.5 this we get from the dial gauge that is on the machine we get this reading multiply this by 1000 into multiply by 9.81 to convert it into newton huh? so if you do this this is the load what i am getting in newton so for us the horizontal tensile this is a tensile stress we have done on split tensile so this tensile will be 2p upon pi ld substitute the formula so 3.26 newton per mm square is my tensile strength of this particular specimen of a concrete what i have done now there is one more formula which is actually not required so this is for vertical compressive stress in the same formula if we do the substitution we are going to get the answer as 20.22 so this is a 
compressive strength of this. This will give me the tensile strength, and this for the same specimen, it is going to give me the compressive strength as well. So if I am getting twenty point two two, what does it signify? It means the grade of my concrete is M twenty grade of concrete I used. So because of that reason, in general way, I am telling since the value is greater than twenty, right? So I am telling this is the M twenty grade of sample what I have taken. But for our discussion is limited to this particular thing. to find the tensile stress right i hope you have got an uh, a complete idea about how these things have to be understood now we get a small graph here this graph is actually related to split tensile so what do you understand by this so we have a cylinder here and this is a graph what you get so why is the graph in this way so we'll try to identify the reason for that the graph says that up to this portion what you have no this portion up to this much portion this is in compression right so that you are getting a value here let us say it is negative here and this much portion also there is compression let us say since compression i denote in terms of negative so i'm writing negative so this much portion what i have let me make use of a, yeah this much portion what i have no it is in tension now right and i'll denote it as positive so how 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 do we get all these things so to put it in a very simple way just imagine the cylinder is kept here this is that cylinder and this is the top portion this is the top portion here and this bottom portion what you can see no this is that bottom portion so when you apply a compressive force initially in the few parts in the top few part due to the contact between this particular specimen and the cylinder you will get a compressive force only up to certain distance similarly in the bottom due to the contact between this uh, beam what you have and also the cylinder in the initial few stage no up to here you get a compressive force right that is due to the platent effect platens effect so that is why we get a compression in the beginning up to this level and here also up to this level we get a compression after that what will happen due to the poisson's ratio i mean due to the poisson's effect the tensile stresses are generated right the tensile stresses are generated so the tensile stresses are generated and the tensile stresses are generated that means it is tension in tensile in nature so that is why your graph is something like this you can see it here up to yeah let me redraw redraw everything yeah so right from here and up to here this entire portion is in tension that means from here to here this is the middle portion let me draw it the middle portion this much middle portion is in tension the graph is here for compression the one which is uh, above the yellow color it is in compression here the one which is uh, the one which is below the yellow color it is compression so it is denoted in this way right so that is the reason the why it is in compression because of the platent effect uh, right uh, we have already understood what is platent effect in the uh, compression strength test regarding the cube and the cylinder why cube is more and why the cylinder is less right so this is all about the split tensile test now we need one more question might have come in our mind that when i told i want to put a tension on this cylinder why is that when you could put the direct tension on the cylinder why did i put the compressive load and then created the tension in the specimen i could have directly put a tension force on this uh, cylinder and i could have got a answer regarding that right but the thing is that if you want to put a tension force on the concrete cylinder then we need to set up a equipment something like this you can see so that you can pull in this way so that you are putting a tension force now setting up a instrument something like this will take a long time and you may not find a instrument something like this in all the labs and also you look at the specimen what you are created you have to create a specimen something like this so again it's a bit tedious work it's very difficult to do let us say you are preparing a cylinder only and in the cylinder you applying a tensile force in this way so when you try to apply a tensile force in this way you need to apply a huge amount of tensile force that means a huge amount of tensile force has to be created and also you need to hold this uh, specimen that is a cylinder in a right way so in the process there might be a failure here itself even before applying the complete uh, tensile force there are chances that your uh, specimen may fail in the compression due to this local failure since you are uh, holding it in both the sides so that may lead to a local failure so in order to avoid all these things in order to avoid all this confusion and all these things what we try to do is we try to do a indirect test on the specimen that is by putting a compressive force we are actually generating a tensile force which actually gives us the value and also it has been seen that moreover this value what we are getting you know the 3.46 what we got we get from the split tensile strength test is more accurate and it is closer to the direct tension tensile strength test so we use this split tensile strength in a more better way whatever answer you get from here 
and the answer what we have already got they almost matched almost they are close let us say 80 to 85 percent so it's okay for us instead of setting up such a uh, what you call a, a different kind of instrument and preparing a mold something like this and all and then applying a huge force and also there is a chance of premature failure of this specimen due to look uh, due to local failure in order to avoid all these things what we try to do is we try to go with a split tensile test and whatever answer we are getting it's within the limit and it's okay for us right yeah so i hope you have got an uh, complete overview of why this split tensile strength test has to be done uh, what is the reason behind that what is the mechanism behind that and all right so along with that i need to add two more points there are a few courses of mine on the online platform called udemy uh, let me show you those things if you are interested to learn them in a more better way uh, and if you want to get yourself ready for the job even before going to the site during your engineering days i would request you to take up those courses which are actually at 360 rupees uh, if you message me for the coupon you'll be getting those courses for 360 rupees so the first is on the learn construction methodology basics in civil engineering which is almost 23 hours which has four and a half star rating around uh, more than uh, thousand students have enrolled here it's the old screenshot what i have taken and you get a certificate as well once you finished the course but don't take the courses for the sake of certificates they're not going to help you anything Your knowledge is going to help you a lot so it's almost 23 hours so this course is all about the complete execution of the building right from the excavation till the slab casting with uh, you'll be also in a position to learn the structural drawings the concepts and each and everything that is related to engineering you're going to learn it in one single course right yeah so all these are the content of that course and there is a lot of uh, reviews given by students and there are almost 125 country students participating in this course right yeah so then the next is on the quantity surveying building estimation bbs with excel and cad so this also has more than 1200 students which has 4.4 rating on the course and also it's a 21 hours content so these are the course content what you get which has each and everything explained in a more better and more uh, practical way with all the site related videos manual calculation excel calculation and each and everything you are going to get the resources is already added there and this is also a rating what you have and one of a student also got placed since he had taken my course so this course has actually helped him these are the reviews by the students and there is one more call, course called learn to read architectural and structural drawing like expert which is almost 28 hours which has more than seven different uh, drawings right from g plus three residential building g plus two hostel building then we have a big industrial steel structures and all and each and everything has been explained right from the architectural plan to the structural layout uh, how to how to calculate the loads coming on the beams the slabs excel and even a, a small part of etabs is also covered here this is almost uh, 28 hours content you can see all the course content here the next is on the etabs which is uh, good for designing which is almost 20 hours content so you'll be learning how to apply the dead load live load how to check the reinforcement how to man how to do the manual detailing right all the code books whatever we have is 875 part 1 part 2 each things are covered in a more better way in a more practical way what we usually follow in the industry right this also has got a good uh, review on the course you can try to go through that then there's one more course on basics of civil engineering in construction so this course is a bit of mix of all the three lectures what i had showed three courses what i have shown you but this has lot of things what a high what a fresher has to understand even before going to the site and also a experienced student who has two three years of experience most of the things will not be knowing what is simply supported connection what is fixed connection how do you give them practically right so we don't know most of the things and there are difference between what we study and what we apply so this course has each and everything in that concrete technology a bit uh, whatever i teach here half of that is here you have you get autocad stad pro is only two hours of content autocad is a five hours content other than that you get some basics of estimation then uh, construction practices has lot of things like simply supported beam fixed beam uh, there are a lot of things uh, what is hidden beam and all so you can see all the contents here and uh, yeah this is about the course rating and you get the course certification certificate course uh, completion certificate as well once you finish the course right so i hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, complete session on split tensile test so we'll see you back in uh, another video thank you and please do subscribe and like the channel so that i can get more and more videos for you
So we'll see you back in the next lecture.